not really, because as John was saying, I think it's the idea that we are the book, but we're like the book now. Okay. <laughs> and because Rick's involved, he's very much with his blessing, which is the most important part of it. Obviously, my job was basically to do his work justice. So I felt that that didn't really matter. The stuff that we augmented or changed a bit is not huge, and generally it helps, and it's kind of how you want to see it now anyway. Okay. Um, so no, no difference really. It was a question of just achieving it all the same, because to me it felt like the right thing to do. So with kids of literally their age, the key thing is focus and energy. Because when you're shooting for 12 or 10 hour days, whatever they used to shoot, it's quite hard to keep that up. So often I do things like run around before <laughs> with them, or like jumping jacks or whatever, because you just get in. That just physical movement gets your brain going, and you need that energy into any scene. Um, and even if it's like an emotional scene, somehow you often need to get that energy to get that focus you require for the emotion. Um, and you know, with them also, sometimes music helps. That's quite a good idea, playing music for them and stuff, that sort of, that sort of thing. Um, but we, I knew going into it, because we cast them, that we were going to be competent actors. I, mean, I knew we do, in our casting sessions, we did quite a lot of uh, games and improv and stuff like that. And I, so I knew they'd be good at taking direction. Uh, and obviously for me, that's a huge part of it, because when you're on set, you haven't got time to fix things, really. They have to be kind of good, and they always work, which is fantastic. Um, I've learned to, I recently love doing books. I'm very excited to book, Percy Jackson's a book, and it's kind of like you bring what you loved from the reading of the book into this world. Um, and part of that for me is obviously my background in comedy. So a lot of that is to do with casting comedians. I think comedians are great actors as well as comedy people, but they have innate funny bones in themselves. So somehow it, they bring a lot of warmth, and I think that was important for this story, because it's a, you know, it's a story about a guy saving his mum. It's quite a serious thing. So if you can bring people into it who have a slightly more, I guess, levity, or have a sense of humor about it, that's a great thing to have around that. And then, you know, that, that sort of stuff felt, felt really important to me. Oh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, Percy's story, Percy's growth as a person. Percy is, doesn't know who he is when he starts this, this whole show out. And by the end, he knows exactly who he is. That's a big thing to learn at 12 years old. It's why I remember very clearly being sent the script. And in the first page of, you know, the first scene description, it said, Percy Jackson, brackets 12. <laughs> I went, <laughs> okay, this is good. <laughs> I am in. Because this whole experience of the show through the eyes of a 12 year old is what this show should feel like. And so that journey of his learning what his nature, learning who he is, and then going through this quite traumatic story to save his mum is a big thing. And that to me, I think was a challenge. And I think hopefully we got that right. No, not really. I mean, obviously when you cast comedians, you get a lot of great improv. And so the longer cuts had more of them mucking around. But you also know that brevity is a good thing generally in any creative endeavor. So I know from past experience that sometimes you just can't show the bits you want to show all the time. So it's mostly just funny quips I thought were amusing, but don't, aren't essential. So you keep in the ones you like, and then sometimes they have to go, and that's just what it is. But I can always remember that myself. So. Yeah, not really. I mean, we have the, we have the advantage of time, I guess. You know, um, Charles Dickens used to write books and chapters and then publish once a week, and that's a good format. That's 150 years ago. So I quite like that idea, and I think we had the advantage of, if you have eight, eight, well, eight half hours, eight, 40 minutes, whatever it is, to tell the story, which is a chapter book in itself, that's to our advantage for sure. Because, it's a, you know, a movie at 90 minutes is not a long time to tell this quite complicated story. Um, but no, not really. There's no lessons to draw, and I think that that film is what it was, and this is what this is, and it's just a different thing. But um, you know, I'm really pleased how it's turned out for sure. Well, I think because of its quest-like nature, sometimes the best thing about this show is how we pause and stop and have them talk, and have dialogue and proper scenes like in a play, because that's about character. And I think these, this book is about characters. These three characters are excellent and you want to spend time with them. They're really fun, they interact beautifully and they kind of learn from each other in a really nice and natural kinetic way. So it's really great. So whilst we have a lot of bunch of fun, fun action scenes, some of my favorite moments are not the action. They're just two-handers where they're talking about stuff. When yeah, Percy and Annabeth in the train talking about her mum, that sort of stuff I love. And those sort of little, little scenes and 
and uh, Ares and Grover together in the diner and stuff. There's some really fun scenes in that, and those scenes I think play really well. And that's often, as a director, your things you're most proud of because of the performance. Action is great and I love it and it has a purpose, but sometimes it's the emotion and the connection you have with the characters is the most important thing. So for me as a director, that's why I think I'm most proud of it. Well, personally for me, I have kids at the right age now to read the books. So I go from what they tell me about it. When I first heard about, when we talk, worked about it, they were very helpful to me because they talked to me about what they liked about the books. And that hasn't really changed, I don't think, what people liked about the books in the first place. I do think that it was quite, Rick's book, the first, you know, like you think, 2005, was very ahead of its time in celebrating difference. And I think nowadays that's much more common, but in those days that was really unique. And I think in many ways that's why it's so popular. But my kids still recognize that today in it, which is fantastic. And I think that's a really important part. So I think, I don't think it's changed that much why people like these books. It's, honestly, it's the characters, they like the characters. Uh, and, and also, I think a big part of it is you yourself would like to be in this world. You yourself would like to be part of Camp Arthur, be a demigod. Everyone loves that idea. It's why Rick's books always say, welcome demigods, because everyone wants to be part of that world. And that is a very appealing way. <laughs> Fun. I mean, volume is a thing whereby it's a really useful tool in terms of getting environments which are vastly different. Um, done in a, a reasonable amount of time without traveling around the world all the time. Because obviously, I, I can't shoot in New York, I can't shoot, you know, there's things you, it just makes the, that part of it much easier. Um, but it is a different discipline because of the LED and the nature of the screens and the shot selection is a bit different because there are rules about what you can and can't do in a volume. But generally, I thought it did an incredible job and I really loved working in it because the light it provides is just incredible and it just really feels interesting to me all the time. But that interior Met, you don't know you're not in the Met. Like when you're even on set, and remember, when you're on set, the volume doesn't really tell you where, I mean, it's much weirder because the volume is basically set up for the camera, the camera shot. So on stage, it's not, it just looks weird. There's like clashes and stuff. But still, at the end of the day, you feel like you've been in the Met. You don't feel like you've been in the blue screen all day. And being blue screen is not fun. Being in the Met all day is totally fine and acceptable and that's quite a good way to spend your time. But you really think you've been indoors in the museum all day. You don't think you've been on stage. It's very weird. Oh, it's the world. The world has to be a plausible, believable world which there exists and is a, is a place you can say, your dad is a god, and it doesn't feel weird. Because <laughs> that's a big line to deliver in episode one, you know, so. And that has to feel like a, it's possible. And the world you have to build has a sense of place and reality, but also a sort of a thread of magic in it, where you go, oh, I mean, that sounds crazy, but that is what happens in this world. And so when Grove walks and he's got goat legs because he's a sex leader, <laughs> you find that's fine because that's what's happened now in this world. So, but I think the grounding of it is the most important thing because the grounding thing ties you in emotionally and then you're with those characters. <laughs>